do what we're doing, you know. Salford-based charity CAPS are this week celebrating the success of their Fight for Flight campaign. The Captive Animals Protection Society launched the campaign six months ago to end the practice of pinioning. Pinioning is the act of clipping a bird's wings to keep it in captivity. So where has the campaign come in the last six months? We've seen some incredible steps forward, in fact. In the first week or so of the campaign, we found out that not only were birds being pinioned in their thousands in zoos around the UK, but also that they were being pinioned illegally. Now, the practice itself is legal. We'd like to see it outlawed, but at the moment it is legal if carried out by a vet. What we were really shocked to find out that zoos and some of the major zoos in the UK were, in fact, allowing completely unqualified members of staff to carry out what is veterinary surgery. It's an amputation. Um, so that was the first thing that we found. Since then, there's been formal um, confirmation from the Chief Veterinary Officer of the whole country stating that this cannot continue as it was. We've also heard as a result of that that this may actually stop zoos from carrying it out, or certainly certain zoos, because it will become cost prohibitive. It will simply become too expensive to pay vets to do it. So we're hoping that that simple sort of um, clarification of the existing law may actually have the effect of, of saving birds from this treatment in the future. Um, we've also seen the campaign extended to Europe, which is really exciting. We've got partners working on it um, currently in France, and we're in conversations with other organisations to see where else we can take it. So um, some big strides forward in a very short space of time, really. And is there actually um, a solution to pinion in? Zoos. Absolutely. Um, from our point of view, as an, an anti-captivity organisation, we don't condone the existence of zoos, if you like. Um, what we would like to see is, obviously, if zoos can't hold birds without mutilating them, then they shouldn't be holding those species at all in captivity. Um, however, even if they were to sort of come halfway, the zoo industry itself accepts that it is feasible to net very large areas which allow birds to stay fully winged, and it seems that it's a cost issue. It seems that the zoos either cannot or will not pay the money. As far as we're concerned, if, if it's talking about amputating a wing to keep a bird in captivity, that bird simply should not be there at all. Um, so as far as we're concerned, that is the solution, an end to those birds being in zoos in, in the first place. And where do you see yourself in the next six months? Um, we've got some interesting developments in the pipeline, which I can't talk about right now. Um, we're hoping to get feedback from um, government advisors to zoos. We've posed some questions to a committee called the Zoo Expert Committee. They advise government on um, sort of zoo issues. We're waiting to hear back their views on our campaign, and we're hoping that that might give us sort of some impetus to move it forward at a, at a government level. Um, in the next six months, we're not going to see the practice outlawed, but that's certainly what we're working towards in the long term. And in the meantime, we'll continue to publicise this to members of the public, because the other thing is that people are really shocked. They, they, they don't think for a second that this is happening, and so that, that will build pressure on zoos to do the right thing. That is perfectly within their power to stop this, and that's what we're going to continue to push for in the next six months. Many aviaries feel that pinioning is unnecessary and instead keep their birds captive in spacious enclosures. We went to Wild Wings Reserve in Warrington to meet with their birds. Well, we either get close bond with the birds and work with them, but I do not agree with cutting the wings. We never have done. I have seen it in the past with a lot of rescues where we've come across birds where the wings have literally been cut straight right across. We've even seen certain situations where they've cut the joints off. And, and you know, you, you, you tell relevant organisations and they don't seem to want to know, they turn a blind eye and I say that because that's what we've seen, we've seen situations like that. Ian then demonstrated the act of pinioning on one of his Harris Hawks. Why they clip the wings, I don't know. It's Well, it's a pet and I don't want it to fly away and all they're happy with just sitting on the glass. You know, and what they do, they tend to, they'll just clip the wings straight down there, right at the primaries, cut all the primaries off. Now you cut the primaries which goes from that joint there, it's a bit like our arm, exactly the same, they've got the same structure, it's just that at the end they've got the group of primaries there you see on the end, from that joint we've got the fingers, so if we lose our fingers we can't hold anything, if they lose the primaries they can't fly, but we've had them come in where, where the primaries are all missing. But as you can see, not everyone has the same ethics as Ian. This footage was sent in via a Twitter user who wishes to remain anonymous. The footage clearly shows the birds in poor conditions and unable to fly away to safety. It is because of conditions like this why CAPS continues its fight for flight and the argument for caged or clipped continues. Beth Colleen, Keys News, Salford.